What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. I deeply apologize because I'm running into some issues here. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm trying to get some things up and running. And everything's just falling apart. <laughs> it's just all falling apart. So, with that being said... I'm going to get into it anyway, um, because unfortunately YouTube has deactivated my ability to, to live stream, but I'm still going to get you the PNTS network content to the best of our ability. Um, don't ask me why. Well, I, I have an idea why, but the algorithm is messed up and this is just unacceptable as it's, um, service to partner with so i'm going to try to clear this up their response system is too conveyor belt and too disconnected and it's just unacceptable everything is unacceptable about this service right now so i'm going to um you know continue to upload content material keep you guys abreast of everything that's going on at e3 and then we're going to take care of some things and if we need to make a move we'll make a move with that said here's what i want to do I want to talk about uh, the conferences at day two. Day two conferences consisted of uh, Ubisoft and Square Enix. So let's let, let's talk about what happened there with those two conferences. All right, and I deeply apologize for this. Just stuff is all over the place. It ain't it ain't working out right. Um, so first off, let's talk about the Ubisoft conference. Okay, the Ubisoft conference. Um, Started off with like 10 plus games, right? That they showed. But even though they showed 10 plus games and some of them were interesting uh, more than others, the lukewarmness of the presentation was due to the lack of gameplay. It was very lukewarm. Um, they did, however, talk about Uplay Plus. And what Uplay Plus is, is it's their streaming service, their version of Game Pass. So if you're familiar with Xbox Game Pass, then you'll know that Uplay Plus will allow you, um, like Game Pass, to get all Ubisoft games as they release day and date, as well as a catalog. And you'll get to play those games on PC because Ubisoft doesn't own a console. This is not a service at the moment that's coming to consoles. It's a service strictly to PC. Um, so you'll get all of Ubisoft's games day and date, right, as they release. You'll also get access um, uh, 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 to a catalog of games that they have um, for a fee of $14.99 per month. But here's the kicker. If you get the Ubisoft service, it's also available through Google Stadia. So with Google Stadia, Google Stadia will allow you to take that, Up uh, that Ubisoft Uplay Plus service and stream it to any device that Google Stadia is on. So... That answers the, the, that takes care of the 500 pound elephant in the room where people were like, well, hold on. If I get Google Stadia for $9.99 and the games that are free with the subscription are light, I got to buy certain games like Division 2 and, 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 and um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. How is that a deal? Well, now if you own this Uplay Plus service as well for a total of $24.99, you'll be able to not only stream anything that comes with Google play service, right? But if you want additional games, you just get the Ubisoft additional games with the Ubisoft you play plus service. So that was a big time announcement. And I had to take a little bit of time to break that down everybody because I wasn't quite sure how that worked at first too. And they really didn't break it down on stage. But now that it makes sense, it's something that your boys definitely eyeing because if you didn't know, now you know that I, am looking to convert to a new set of streaming services or game services once my Xbox subscription lapses. Me personally, what I saw from Microsoft Gaming, okay, they're not Xbox to me, it's Microsoft Gaming on that E3 stage. They drew a line in the sand. I've said this a thousand times over. They said, you either come with our side, what side do you belong on? Look down. If you're on our side, Come on over with us and the shovelware and the, uh, the 
Halo, Gears, and Forza, you'll get. But if you're not on this side, we don't care what you have to say. Pretty much. And that's fine. You know, that it's their choices, their product, their service. They're allowed to do whatever they want to do. I didn't appreciate the rope-a-dope, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, being dragged along in this whole process because, again, had I known that, then I wouldn't have made the, the investment that I made. But all my um, all of the subscription services that I've invested to with Microsoft, they all lapse next year. And as things stand, they actually lapse after E3. Now, I'm not saying wait till E3. My mind is made up. I am letting the service go. Now, let's say, for instance, I see Fable. I see Halo. Okay. Fable ain't coming out no time soon. I am interested in Halo Infinite. So we, I buy Halo Infinite and they're going to release it on Steam and you know Steam has crazy deals. So I'm just going to get it at a discounted price and I'll enjoy Halo Infinite. You know, it's a no brainer. I'm not going to pay an equivalence of 60 plus dollars a year or whatever it is or 100 for, for one or two games every blue moon. You know what I mean? I'm willing to do it is if the content is going to be consistent with stuff that I like. And if it's not consistent with stuff that I like, then I'm not quote unquote holding faith. As I told somebody on social media um, today that faith to me, <laughs> when, when you talk about it in this realm, is for the NFL draft. OK, <laughs> Microsoft is not a sports team. They are a provider of goods and services. And as a provider of goods and services, I'm expecting them to produce. And I need them to produce now. My faith runs out when my services lapse. So with that being said, the reason why I'm bringing this up, to bring it all back home, is that with this combo of you play in Stadia, it's very interesting to me, $24.99 a month. I play, most of the games I play this generation are Ubisoft games, so I will enjoy that. Um, and it'll help in my conversion once my Xbox services lap, lapse. All right. Now, even though they announced that, again, the big Achilles heel of the, of the show was the not enough gameplay, the whole thing that the gameplay was missing. But with that said, um, the content of the show was Rainbow Six Quarantine, which is their take of what they're doing with Rainbow Six Siege, which is strictly PvP, and they're now making a PvE mode, and they're separating the two. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's called Rainbow Six Quarantine. It's co-op, and it's PvE. And that's very inter interesting to me and enticing to me. What it reminds me of what they're doing is they're taking, like, the Rainbow Six Vegas game, and you know how they had those modes. They had PvP modes, elaborate PvP modes, like how Siege does, and, and it also had a PvE mode, uh, which, which was called terrorist hunt. You know what I'm saying? And that was fun to do. You know what I mean? So it looks like they're taking those two game elements, splitting them out and making them their own product. And let's see how it goes. I'm very interested in it. The, the trailer, even though it was a cinematic trailer, looked interesting. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see what they make of that. In addition to that, um, they had gods and monsters. That is a game, uh, that is made by the people that made Assassin's Creed Odyssey. They made this side project. And it kind of reminds you of a, like a more badass Zelda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It has an interesting art style and it, it really interested me a lot. But the biggest thing in this, in this uh, showcase was the Uplay and the Uplay Stadia announcement. So with all that being said, what does MM2K give this showcase? I give the showcase a, I'm, I'm, and these are preliminary scores. I give the showcase anywhere between an eight and an eight and a half. You know what I'm saying? I am not liking the lack of gameplay, but man, that you play plus announcement. That's a big deal. That's a big, that's one of the biggest announcements so far, if not the biggest announcement. So with that being said, I will definitely uh, be looking forward to that. All right. So in addition to that, we now have Square Enix. So what Square Enix showed is they showed 18 plus games, right? But here's the thing about Square Enix's showcase. Just like how Ubisoft was lacking in gameplay, the stuff that I saw from, from Square Enix was mostly dated looking RPGs. Now, before y'all flip out and freak out, understand this. This is coming from a place, this is not coming from a place of bias where I hate RPGs. My favorite game of all time is Fantasy Star 2 from the Sega Genesis. That is an RPG. That's my favorite game of all time. I love RPGs. 
there was a period in my time uh, or uh, in my gaming manifesto, whatever you want to call it, that the only thing that I played, I didn't play no sports games. I didn't play no action. Game. The only thing that I played was RPGs, turn-based RPGs. That was like for a two to three year basis because I was hard at work and it was just, you know, that was my favorite genre. So I would just turn on the, the PlayStation and play my RPGs, my, my Zeno Gears, my uh, Lunar Silver and, and, and Lunar Blue. You know what I'm saying? I would just play Arc to Lad. I would just play those games, right? Um, so I like RPGs, but here's the thing. Just because I like something doesn't mean that it has to be suspended in the same state as far as uh, animations and how it plays. Like, for instance, um, Final Fantasy VII, which we'll talk about. Final Fantasy VII, the original, though, was an enhancement visually in a lot of ways from Final Fantasy VI, okay? Final Fantasy VII looks completely different and looks like an upgrade in a lot of ways from Final Fantasy VI. Okay. Has a lot of gameplay elements to that are an enhancement. You take a game like Chrono Trigger, which is considered one of the best RPGs of all time. You take Chrono Trigger and you look at other action-based RPGs like that, like the Tail series. Those are enhancements of what happened, what was going on in Chrono Trigger. Okay. So I don't get to just because you're a fan of RPG, while why everything the aesthetics, the, the the how they play have to be stuck in, in in suspended animation. I don't like that. So all this stuff looks dated, pretty much for with with a few exceptions, and I didn't like that. And as an RPG fan myself, I don't like that. You should always grow. I understand there's a simplistic nature to RPGs, and particularly turn-based or strategy rpgs but it doesn't mean you can't mix it up a little bit i've seen a lot of games that mixed it up and i didn't see enough of that in these 18 plus games that they showed which were primarily rpgs a lot of them look dated again i know it's not like a broken record but it is what it is okay however with that being said that final fantasy 7 remake even though I talked about Final Fantasy VII having enhancements over six, six is my favorite Final Fantasy by by far. By far, I love six. You know what I'm saying? But man, that Final Fantasy remake, the gameplay in that and how they've enhanced it looks fantastic. It looks very good. Looks very good. You know what I'm saying? So definitely something for fans of that game to look forward to, right? Um. So again, if I had to point out the cons like how I did with Ubisoft it was an oversaturation of dated looking items um and also not enough trailers that highlighted their triple a stuff like even Final Fantasy 7 it's a remake it's 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 a remake of an older style game so that's like double a you know what I mean even though it's a remake it's still double a um but they had AAA games that they showed. They showed Dying Light, right? They showed this game called, I think it's called Overturn or something like that. Let's see if I can pop it up real quick. Uh, Square Enix, yeah. It, it was called, uh, oh, Outriders. The game made by People Can Fly. And let me just say this about People Can Fly. I'm not trying to be mean. But people are excited about a cinematic trailer of this game Outriders from a development team that's still unproven. I mean, think about it. People say, oh, Bulletstorm, I like Bulletstorm, and that enhancement, man, that's dope. But nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. Then they did uh, Gears of War Judgment, which a lot of people say is the worst Gears of War. So people can fly is unproven. So without me seeing gameplay from them, it's not like when I saw Rainbow Six Quarantine, like Red Storm and all those people, they just released a hell of a game or hell of two games in Rainbow Six Siege and how that's evolved in Division, the Division 2. So their pedigree is on the table and it's well-respected. Seeing a cinematic trailer from people 
can fly is not doing it for me. I needed to see gameplay on the big stage. So that's AAA game, or potential AAA. We don't even know if this is AAA. So that's potential AAA game number one. AAA game number two, Dying Light. They showed an old trailer from way back in the day, and it looked horrible. I thought this was, I was like, what double A game? I said, this is a dying light want to be double A. I, it didn't even resemble the dying light when I originally saw it. It looked bad. Dying light two, that is. Then lastly, you have Avengers, which everybody got all creamy knuckled. I'm sorry for lack of a better term, but seriously, this is getting ridiculous. I get that E3 is lackluster in some way so far, but people were getting ridiculous with this. They were all excited about this Avengers, but it doesn't even, it, it, it wasn't confirmed as far as my, now I could be wrong, but it wasn't confirmed that that was even gameplay. You know, when they play games, they have the little, you know, disclaimer, this is in-game or in-engine footage. You saw none of that. And even if there was gameplay embedded in that, it was a little bit of it. Now, they had it panned. Now, now the slick thing they could have did is they had it panned like that was gameplay. But for an online connected game that's supposed to be MMO-ish or something like that, I believe it is, I don't know if it's going to look like that. And that was the slick nature of the presentation. Now, there could have been other clips and stuff that I missed to where they do mention this gameplay, but it, it, they didn't say it on a big stage. And I am judging the presentation on the big stage. Just like when I judge Microsoft's presentation on the big stage, it doesn't matter that they show gears of war, uh, five or gears, five footage off the stage. And with IGN, you didn't show it on the big stage. So that's what I'm rating you for. So those are the cons. And I know I was long winded about that, but I just wanted to be abundantly clear because I think people are trying to overhype this showcase for one, because well, let's be honest here. Because they primarily had a lot of PlayStation stuff in there. So the PlayStation Nation is trying to run with this moniker, PlayStation 1 E3 without having to be there. No, stop, stop. You didn't show up, that's an L. Okay, I don't care how much you slice it. So because Square Enix does a lot of ex console exclusive PlayStation stuff, whether it's timed or not, they want to run with that moniker. So the PlayStation Nation is coming out in brass, and they're good at that, all right? They're good at the, at the herd, you know, coming out with the herd. But more, I think more importantly than that, um, again, E3 has been somewhat lackluster. So that's why you got a lot of people running with these notions that they got to praise something. Because in, 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 in comparison to years past, it hasn't been that great. And, I, and I'll be the first to, to admit that. All right. However, with all that detriment and all that bad stuff that I was saying and all that uh, anti-square <laughs> enix stuff that I just babbled off, nonetheless, there were bright spots. And those bright spots were, again, Final Fantasy VII. I did not care for the game that much way back in the day when I played it. I have a long lineage, lineage with uh, RPGs and RPGs are about story, but all the cinematics that was into it was a little, it wasn't charming to me. It was tear jerky and cheese. It, it wasn't, it didn't do it for me. Where Final Fantasy VI and his 2D scroller elements did it a lot. It was a lot more charming and wow. I was like, wow, man, this is fantastic. With that being said, this remake has piqued my interest to where I might even pick this thing up. I might even pick it up, man. So that, that, good job. Good job with this remake. In addition to that, there's a game that's flying under the radar. And that game looks like now it's coming out for the Switch. But God, I don't have a Switch. Do I got to get a Switch for this game? I hope not. I hope it comes to PC. I might have to borrow snow bunnies. <laughs> and that game is. Oninaki, man, see that hits right, the head um, of the nail, it hits right on the nail, what I was saying about, you can show an RPG with a simplistic base and add elements to it to enhance it and put it in 2019. Not only for an RPG, but for a Switch game at that, that Oninaki looks fantastic. Wow. 
And I'm going to tell you this, mark my words, because I am a true RPG fan, okay? I've been playing RPGs before a lot of you listening this, to this were even born. That only Naki was so impressive. It's damn well running for my game of show spot, man. <laughs> that, that looks fantastic. So that was a bright spot. So then, so overall, and I want y'all to hear me out after I give this score. Overall, I give, and these are, again, preliminary. I give Square Enix's showcase. I'm hovering around a seven, maybe a seven and a half, but I'm, I'm more to it because here's why. Again, not enough trailers for your AAA stuff. Okay. I look at things from a prism of your top notch boom bang stuff. I get it. Final Fantasy seven taps at the heartstrings for nostalgia. But to me, E3 is all about taking you into the future, not dusting off new stuff and putting a fresh coat of paint on it. Like for instance, I love Bioshock. I love Mass Effect. But if they were to come out with a 4K HD version of that and, and enhance the, the, the fight mechanics in, in Mass Effect 1 to be more like 2 and 3 and a little bit better, that can't be my game of show. That's not, the, I mean, or let me say it like this. If that ends up being the game of show, then that's sad. And I think Mass Effect and Bioshock are some of the best games that I've seen in a very long time over multiple gens. But those games have already been made and delivered. I am looking for new experiences. So people that are like Final F uh, Fantasy VII is the game of the show and they're excited about that. No. No. I am not quick to give an older, brushed off, new coat of paint experience game of show when we got fresh, brand new experiences like Watch Dogs with this whole nuanced and, and, and innovative feature of you could be any NPC. Oh, and it's in the future. That looked fantastic. That's taking me into the future of gaming. And then now this Oninaki is fantastic. That, that's the new experience. Man. Now, don't, I hope I'm not wrong. I hope this Oninaki ain't a remake. <laughs> Because I you know I'll catch a massive L for that. But I've never seen it before. So I'm going off of that. So that's stuff that, oh man, fantastic, fantastic. So with that being said, because those are the two bright spots that over that, that kind of like tried its best to overshadow to me, which I think was an oversaturation of dated looking games and not enough umph in your triple A experiences. It, it, it brought it from the ashes, but it was only able to take it to a seven, maybe a seven and a half. So again, these are just preliminary scores. But with that being said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Like I said, we're going to get this together. We're going to figure things out. Please stay tuned to our E3 coverage. Um, we're going to film Scram Punks this week too. That's coming from Dirk Griggity's channel. We'll see what we're going to do. Like I said, if we got to go to another platform, we just got to go to another platform. You know, we'll give you all the details on that. But again, if you can see in, in, in the video here, please follow us at pntsnetwork.com, pntsnetwork.com. Please follow us there. Um, we got E3 TV. We got 24-7 E3 coverage. We got stuff that PNTS is able to do via live stream. And then we also got uh, things that we're doing um, with our partner channels like Next Gen 720's channel and Dante Christ and stuff like that. So stay tuned, all right? And with that being said, my friends, you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. I'm out. More to come on the Nintendo Direct 2 and the PC gaming show from day two. All right, peace.